Bruce shared. Um, this is a uh, kind of a household family fellowship. Um, we're in this together, right? <laughs> it's uh, been a long time. Um, actually, in 1976, my wife and I and a few families moved to the Ann Arbor area. And we met with, uh, <clears throat> there were about 10 saints uh, with us at that time. And we started meeting in my home in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Bill, you know where Ypsilanti is, right? <laughs> well, actually, we were in Belleville, but between Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti. And eventually, we had up to like 35 meeting with us. But to do some uh, <clears throat> situations in, <clears throat> in recovery in the church, there were some storms that came and mm -hmm. caused some difficulties. Oh, I lost this. Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me, is this, where does this go? Anyway, there was difficulties, and so um, a number of us moved back. I went, I think uh, Jeff went to Columbus, right? And my wife and I went back to Cleveland, and uh, we began to serve the uh, church in Cleveland. But even though we moved back, um, the Lord still put it on my wife and my heart, even though Barb was going through some difficult situations with, in her life and our life. We had four children at the time. <clears throat> the Lord still had put it on our heart. We should move back to Detroit. Amen. So in 1979, which was just <clears throat> two years later, <laughs> we moved back, right? And that's when <clears throat> the families came and we started meeting together. So it's been a long time. Uh, serving the church, a um, lot of ups and downs, a lot of blessings, a lot of difficulties, <laughs> a lot of weakness in my serving, <laughs> and my and humility, learning how to serve, and many difficulties, but Lord, isn't it wonderful we're still here? Amen. Amen. We're still fighting on. Amen. And just like we sang that hymn this morning, the chorus said, but I know whom I have believed and am persuaded he is able to keep that which I have or we have committed unto that day. Amen. So brothers and sisters, this morning what I'm going to share is a little bit what is really on our heart for the church. Um, when we talk about the, the building, the building is just a building. And the building is a facility which the Lord has given us to use. But the building is not what the Lord is building. He's, he's not after the size of your building or which, with what, how great is the building. He's looking to what's happening in the building through the believers. So this morning I have just what's called a words of encouragement. I just have some different verses that I would like to use this to encourage us and to exhort us to, to continue to tell the Lord we're here to fight the battle. We're here to go on. <clears throat> Until you return, until some of us may go earlier or be with the Lord, we don't know. But we're not quitting. We're not giving up. We want to serve the Lord unto the end. Amen. Amen. And this is what uh, was spoken by Jesus to the disciples in Matthew 16, 16 and 18. The Lord asked the disciples, who do men say I am? And they said, maybe you're Elijah, maybe you're a prophet, maybe you're this. And then Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. This is what we stand upon. This is who we stand upon. This is our testimony. This should remain our testimony that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Amen. We must remember this. The Lord said, and then in verse 18 he says, I also say to you, Peter... This is Christ speaking. Amen. That you are Peter. And on this rock, what is this rock? This rock is the revelation that Jesus is Christ. Amen. Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. The church is built upon who Jesus Christ is. Amen. It's not built upon any great ministry. It's not built upon any good, great teaching. Even though we have ministry, even though we have teaching, we have doctrine. 
the church is built on a one person and one person alone, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. But this is what the Lord promised. He said, I, Jesus, will build my church. Amen. Do we believe this? Yes. Yes. Do we receive this? Yes. And he said, the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Now when he says that, he's also telling us that the gates of Hades is going to do the best it can. Satan is going to do his best to try to prevail against the church. Amen. Try to prevail against God's work on this earth. Amen. But we believe what Jesus said. Amen. He said, I will build my church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is our dear Lord's proclaiming to us. So this is what we're here for. Amen. We're still here to stand with the Lord Jesus for the building of his church. Amen. Yes, we've experienced a lot of things over the years, whether they be a storm, whether they be difficulties, whether the world is against us, whether things are against us, we are still here for the building up of the church. Amen. And then the Lord also spoke at the end of his, um, when he resurrected, and this is what he spoke in Matthew chapter 28, 18, and 20. And this is where I'm going to begin to share with us practically, this is what we're here for. And this is what we should continue. Amen. Whether we are in this building, big or not big, we're here. We moved to a smaller facility. The heart and burden is still the same, Amen. right? Basically, just let me go practically one thing. Any building we find, we're looking still in the Livonia area. We're still looking maybe go a little bit further west in order for the Saints and Novi and Northville can be a little bit closer. But our attitude, is, again, is not the building. It is the building for our, our, our sake and our care and our way to worship. But the real thing is this is what we're here for. And this is called, many people call this, <clears throat> the Great Commission. And this is our commitment. This is what we've been committed with. This is what the church, overall, the body of Christ has been committed with. And it says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Amen. There's a lot of problems on this earth today. There's a lot of difficulties on this earth. There's warfare in Israel, right? <laughs> There's fighting against nation against nation. There's fighting against Christians, the church. There's fighting for the truth of the Bible. There's fighting against one person, another person. The world is a mess. But this is our commission. When we believe all authority <clears throat> is in the hands of Jesus. Amen. So if you begin to get discouraged, you begin to get frustrated, We've got an election coming up this year. There's a lot of frustration, discouragement. <laughs> Choices are not easy. Things are difficult. How the world's going to go? We just have to say, Lord, we pray for what happens in this earth. We pray for what happens in, this, in the United States and this country for the sake of the gospel. But our faith is not in politics. Our faith is not in a politician. Our faith is in the Lord Jesus who has been given all authority, Amen. right? Whether it's in heaven, on earth, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Jesus is the ruler. And this is what Jesus told us. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Disciple means a student, a follower of Jesus. Amen. Not just a Christian that goes to church, not a person that just, you know, once in a while talks about God. A disciple is a true follower of Jesus who's willing to give up his life for Jesus, who's willing to take up his cross for Jesus Amen. and to follow and walk according to the truth of the word of God and to follow him and be raised up to be a servant of the Lord. We're all servants of the Lord. Amen. So he tells the disciples, the apostles, but this is a, to all of us, go to the nations. Doesn't matter. Right? I, what's wonderful about the church life that we have experienced over the years, even though today we're, it's smaller, there's still many nations here, right? There's English speaking, Chinese speaking, Spanish speaking, Polish speaking, right? There's a brother from Brazil that speaks Portuguese, right? There's a sister, I don't see, see if I see her here, from Korea, right? They speak different languages, every tribe and nation. 
This is a blessing that church has had over many years. Amen. We have many nations, Amen. right? And this is what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And what we're supposed to do is baptize them into the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We baptize people in the name of the Father. We remember the Father's great love we has for us. Amen. We ba baptize people in the name of the Son. We remember the redemption, the forgiveness of our sins that our Lord Jesus Christ gave to us. Amen. When we baptize people in the name of the Holy Spirit, we remember this Holy Spirit is doing a transforming work. Mm -hmm. The whole triune God, the Father loves us, the Son redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit is transforming us and conforming us to the image of His Son. Amen. This is what we're doing here. This is what we should encourage one another. Maybe there's some new ones in your home gatherings. Maybe new ones among us. Maybe we'll meet people, right? We passed out many Bibles. May, may the Lord grant some of those young men, people, women, to be brought to a place that will nurture them and disciple them. This is what we're here for. <coughs> Amen. <laughs> and then not only that, <clears throat> we're teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. When we bring people to the Christ through the gospel, we teach them the things that Jesus spoke, mm -hmm. the things that the Word of God spoke, and we teach them to walk in obedience to those things. Yeah. I'll just give a quick story I heard, because this is, I believe, a lot of Christians' concepts in this world today. There was this young couple that was not, not in the church as we know, I read about this, there was a young couple serving a group of young people in a church. They were trying to teach them about the Bible and about Jesus. <clears throat> and many of these young people were really hungry for the Lord. But this young couple that was teaching were living together. They were not married. They were living together, teaching young people to follow Jesus. And a group of the young people that were there, they think they were either young college students, they went up to this couple and they asked them, how can you teach us the things of the Bible and you're living together in sin, not being married. And their answer was, well, we didn't tell you we were disciples of Jesus. We just said we're Christians. I believe this is what a lot of people believe today. They want to declare they're a Christian. They want to declare that they, they believe in Jesus, but they want to live the lifestyle that they choose, even though it's against the word of God. We're not here to teach that. We're here to teach what the Lord commanded us. This morning we had the Lord's table. The Lord told us to remember him. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of him. <clears throat> the Lord's table is one of his commandments. We must keep the Lord's table, not in an outward way, but a way that it gives us an opportunity to sing and worship our Savior, to give glory to him, to lift his name, to honor him, to praise him. One of his other ones would be to baptize people, right? Right? Jesus said you need to read Peter when he preached the gospel. He said, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Baptism is our declaration <clears throat> to the world and to everyone else that we belong to Jesus Christ. And we are choosing to take him as our Lord. There's other commandments, right? We should love our neighbor as ourself. We should love the Lord with all our heart. We should love the word of God. We should shepherd one another. All these things we need to teach one another, and we need to encourage one another. <clears throat> this is what we are here doing in the church of Livonia. This is what we want to continue to do, continue to preach the gospel, continue to preach the word, continue to uplift people, and keep the truth of the word of God. Amen. Let me grab some water here. <laughs> So another thing, I just have this because um, sometimes it seems like it can be difficult and not easy to serve the Lord when we get older, but that doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. Here we are. I just celebrated my 74th birthday. Still have, I don't know my, how many years the Lord might give me. I could live longer, but the Lord's mercy be what, what he chooses. But everything we do, 
We do according to the power of Christ. We don't do this according to our power. Brother Way, could you read these verses that are up here? Can you read them okay? Ephesians 1, 19. In Chinese? No, could you read them in English first? Sure. Well, I can have someone else read them. How about Bruce, you read them, and then Way, you can read them in Chinese. I'll let Way go first. Way go first, Chinese. <laughs> you can do it in Chinese, Way. Oh, okay. Better for you to do it in Chinese than me. I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> Bing,知道,他向我们这信的人所显的能力是何等浩大。就是照他在基督身上所运行的大能大力。使他从死里复活,叫他在天上坐在自己的右边,远超过一切执政的长权的。有能的主治的和一切有名的不但是今世的连来世的也都超过了又将万有伏在他的脚下使他为教会做万有之手教会是他的身体是那充满万有者所充满的 And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe Amen. according to the working of his mighty power Amen. which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places Amen. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come. Amen. And he put all things under his feet Amen. and gave him Amen. to be head over all things to the church, Amen. which is his body, the mm. fullness of him who fills all in all. Amen. These are powerful verses. These are wonderful verses. And this is Paul speaking to the church in Ephesus. Mm. And we, we read this ourselves. And he reminds them, the church, but the power the church has is, again, not based on a particular ministry, not based upon um, a great uh, orator, it's not based upon the music entertainment, it's not based upon the power of finances or any of those things, but it is according to the exceeding greatness of the power that raised Christ from the dead, that very power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead has been given to the church. Has been given to the church. And this Jesus was raised from the dead. And where is he? He's sitting at the right hand in the heavenly places. And he's far above all. I'd like to remind you again. All authority was given to him. Our Lord Jesus has set all things under his feet. He's above the power and might and dominion of every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Amen. And he put all things under his feet. Doesn't seem like it, right? <laughs> this one verse in Hebrews, right? We, I believe it's Hebrews. We see all things under his feet, but not yet been fully fulfilled. All things are under his feet. We stand on that promise. We live by that promise. But we do see Satan doing a lot of activity. Satan trying to fight against the church, against God's kingdom. You know, and even in the United States, which for many, many years was a, a, a country that was really open for the gospel, right? In the 1800s, the gospel was really going on. And in the 50s, the gospel was going on. There was a lot of things. I grew up in a, in a church that preached the gospel. People would come. They'd come forward to hear Jesus. I got saved, right? Many were saved, right? And then in the 60s, in the early 70s, again, the Lord... Holy Spirit moved through the United States where many were brought to Jesus Christ. Many that used to be hippies living uh, a sinful life, confessed and opened and repented, right? And some of them are, are here, right? And they received Jesus. It was the power of the Holy Spirit, right? So there was an openness and the Holy Spirit was, was moving. And we still believe the Holy Spirit's moving in many ways, but we also see Satan bringing in 
conflict in the United States. Mm -hmm. And even many Christianity groups, many groups are um, watering down the gospel. They're preaching a gospel that does not according to the truth of the word. They're preaching a gospel that brings people in to hear life lessons, to hear things about this, tolerance, all these kind of things. But the truth is being watered down. But Jesus is still the Lord. But who will remain faithful to the word of God? Amen. Who will remain faithful to Amen. preach Jesus Christ as Lord? Amen. Who will still say that Jesus Christ is the only way? Amen. Right? All these things. Who's going to preach it? Brothers and sisters, in this small room, we hope others do, but we're in a small room. We are going to. Amen. This is our encouragement. This is our longing to still fight this battle of preaching the gospel. And it says he gave all things under his feet, and he gave the Lord to be head over all things to the church, Amen. which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Amen. No matter what people may say, no matter how much they come against us, they may, we may be persecuted, we may be thrown in prison at some time, but we stand faithful that the Lord is the Lord. Amen. And we want to remain faithful. And Lord, we pray that the Lord would never allow us to water down the gospel, to make the gospel cheap, but bring the truth of the gospel, the reality of the gospel, that Jesus Christ will save you. Jesus Christ can transform you. Jesus Christ can make your life different inwardly. And you can live to the glory of God. This is our heart. This is our burden. And this is what we will still continue to do here in the church in Livonia. And this is the uh, next couple of verses, section of verses is just our encouragement because I think it, it speaks to where we are actually in our age at this point. Um, these verses are in 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. And I, again, this is, this is the emphasis, the title, preach the word, Amen. preach the gospel. <laughs> this is our burden. Preach the word, preach the gospel, Amen. disciple people whether large group, big group, wherever we are, this building and other building, we're still here with this burden. We must never forget that. And this is why I don't remember, I don't, I hope you recall in our study of Luke, Chinese speaking have been in Luke and um, we've been in Luke. And you remember when uh, Zechariah was picked to go into the uh, temple and burn incense? And it says many people were outside of the, um, the temple praying right? He went to pray. They were also praying. I believe many of them were praying for what, for, Je for Zechariah, that they could have a fellowship with the Lord. And they were praying for Zechariah to have a touch to know God and to have some revelation from God. This is what we, they were doing, right? And this is what we need to do. When brothers begin to speak, when we're serving the Lord, whether in a home meeting or even now, we need to pray for one another, pray that we can be committed and remain faithful to what the Lord is doing. Amen. Now, 2 Timothy is Paul's speaking to Amen. Timothy. Amen. So it's to an individual, it's <clears throat> to Timothy. So I'm borrowing a little bit because I believe it's also to the church uh -huh. because we're reading it and it's been given to us. Amen. Now, Tim, Paul is ready to go. Right. You know, as times that he says, my, my crown has been set up before me. Mm -hmm. He knows that he's going to die soon. He's going to be martyred. And he's still charging Timothy to remain faithful Amen. to these things. Amen. The word and the gospel. Mm. Right? And Timothy was put in a very difficult place because by this time, some of the churches had wrong teaching coming in. And they had false teaching coming in. And they had attacks from the world. They had many things coming in. And here's this Timothy. <clears throat> A younger brother, he's a little bit older now. He's got problems with his stomach. He's nervous, thinking, Paul, what are you doing? You're leaving me with this. And what am I going to do? And Paul's just saying, you know, just hang in there, Timothy. This is what I want you to do. He says, I charge you, therefore, be God, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing of his kingdom. So you see the importance. Paul reminds Timothy that God and Jesus are one are coming to judge 
this world. And we need to be reminded, God is coming to judge this world. Amen. And Peter says, if you know this, it matters how you live. Amen. Take care of how you live before the Lord. Amen. But also the world is going to be judged. Amen. And so he's telling Timothy, remember the appearing of his kingdom is going to come. So what should you do? Verse 2, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Amen. Convict, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, Amen. with love and teaching. So this is the first thing that Paul reminds Timothy. He needs to preach the word of God. Amen. The answer to people, the answer to this world is the word of God. Amen. It's not how much we can entertain people. It's not how great our music is. It's not, sorry, I'm collapsing here. <laughs> it's not how wonderful huh, the speakers are because I know how one, I'm not a good speaker. But still, we preach the word. Amen. This is what we will continue to do. Preach the word of God. Amen. What does the Bible really say? Amen. How does the Bible convey to us who God is? The Bible unveils us who Jesus Christ is. The, God, the Bible unveils to us how we should live in the world, how we should live with our wives, how we should live with our children, how we should live with one another, how should we walk before the Lord. This is what the Bible teaches. It teaches proper relationships between husbands and wife, proper relationships between father and son and mother the children, and the children with the parents. The Bible teaches all the things that we need. We can make it practical, but the Word of God is the truth Amen. concerning marriage, concerning many things, concerning gender, Amen. all these kind of things. The Word of God speaks the truth. We're going to continue to preach this Word. Amen. In season and out of season. Whether it seems like when we preach the Gospel, it seems a little bit, at least to us, out of season, right? It doesn't mean we don't preach, but what do we still do? We still go out, pass out 13, 1,350 Bibles. We still have a gospel meeting, right? We still preach the gospel in our home gatherings. My wife, when she sees people, she's always preaching the gospel, saying something to them, right? Others have, right? John and Betty, you meet people on the street in the park, right? And you, you share the gospel. We do this. Amen. Claudia, you do this. Many of the Chinese... We do this because this is what we want, see people saved. Amen. Our response is not up to us. That's up to the Lord. Amen. But we sow the seed, and we will not stop sowing the seed of the gospel. Amen. Then verse 3, because this is where we're at now in verse 3. It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound teaching, Amen. not endure sound doctrine, um, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap for themselves teachers. Amen. So the world has its own desires. We see this in the United States. Young people have desires. All kinds of people have desires. <clears throat> and if they're going to go to church, they're going to find a place that teaches what goes along with their desire. Yeah. Right? If you teach this and they don't like it, they'll find somewhere else. Right? This is why a lot of churches have now picked to choose to water down the gospel in order to receive people. We don't want them to make them feel bad. <clears throat> we don't want them to, you know, have a problem with, you know, their conscience. We, we'll take them in and we'll just hope, you know, maybe they'll change. But who's going to preach the true gospel? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Each one of us has sinned. Our, our righteousness is filthy rags. But let me tell you, the Lord Jesus Christ, his blood can cleanse you. Amen. He cleanses us from every sin. Amen. When we open up and repent, this is our gospel. But there's, this is what people are doing. They're seeking teaching that goes along with their desires. And their desires are not righteous. And we, should, we will never compromise the gospel for people's desires. Amen. But we will speak the truth. But we do it in love, right? He says do it. He says to exhort rebuke with long suffering or some say with love and teaching them how to find Jesus how to walk with Jesus and it says in verse 4 and they will turn their ears away from the truth 
and being turned aside to fables. Amen. Untruths, just stories, Lord. fables, nothing that's going to really help them. Amen. It may make them feel good, right? We have a feel-good gospel. Oh, you want to feel good? Just believe in Jesus. You'll never have any more problems, have more difficulties in your life. I'm here to tell you that's not true. Amen. When you believe in Jesus, Amen. you have eternal life. You have the strength, the Holy Spirit in dwelling you. But I can tell you, even through your problems, Amen. you have Jesus. Amen. Without Jesus, you, all you have is your problems. Mm -hmm. many, today, many young people are committing suicide because they're dissatisfied. They can't find any hope in this world. They don't know what to do. So let's just get out of this world and die. We're here to preach hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. But verse 5, again, this is to us. But you, he's talking to Timothy, you're going to be in this environment. You're going to be involved in this situation. You're going to be with people at school. You're going to be with people on your job, wherever you might be in society, in your friends or whatever. And they're going to talk about these things. And they're going to be saying, doing, doing things. And they're going to be trying to say, oh, you need to be more tolerant. You need to do this. You need to do that. But he says, but you be watchful in all these things. Endure inflictions. Afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. This is what Paul tells. Preach the word. Preach the gospel. Amen. We, may, we may not be evangelists as far as a gifted person. But here he tells Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Evangelists preach the gospel. Each one of us sitting in this room, every seat that's filled this morning can preach the gospel. Every one of us can share something to our friends, our family, our coworkers, to our neighbors, something about Jesus Christ. And this is what the church in Livonia is going to continue to do, to remain faithful, Amen. remain faithful to preach the word and to preach the gospel. And then just one concluding verse. This is from 2 Peter 3, 17 through 18. And this is just an encouragement to each one of us. <clears throat> it says, You therefore, beloved, since you knew, know this beforehand. Now, Peter just spoke to the, to the uh, scattered uh, believers that the Lord Jesus is coming back. Amen. Right? He's going to be returning. And he says, oh, Since you've heard, you know this beforehand, be, will, will beware lest you also fall, fall from your own steadfastness. Remember, don't weaken in your steadfastness to follow the Lord and to read the word and stand with the word. One thing we can learn is how to share things in love. But we need to share the truth. Amen. But we don't need to weaken in our steadfastness. Being led away with the error of the wicked. The things they teach about marriage, the things they teach about gender identification, transgenderism, all these things, these are errors of the wicked. What was good has now become evil, and what is evil has now become good. But you, remember, remain steadfast. And this is what we're encouraging, and I'm encouraged myself and all of us, but you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless us and honor us with such a desire that we would all help one another, encourage one another to grow in the grace Amen. and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Never think we, have, we know it all. Never think we have it all. We can always grow more. We can always know more of the Lord's grace. Yes. We can all know more about Jesus Christ. Amen. May this be our heart. May this be our burden. And lastly, how about we read this together? The to him. To him. Did you read that in Chinese, please? Amen. Yes, Lord, to you be the glory. Let me just include what's a, a prayer and then. If anybody has any questions, anything, uh, we can, what's that? Well, 
we'll have questions before the song, right? I do have a song we might conclude with. We'll see. But Father, we thank you this morning for this <clears throat> opportunity to be here as the church in Livonia together. Amen. Lord, we thank you for over these many years that you have been so merciful. Amen. Your grace has been sufficient. Amen. Amen. Lord, we still are here. Amen. We still love you, Lord. Amen. We still want to fight with, for you and with you for your kingdom. Amen. We still want to preach the word. Amen. We still have a longing to still preach the gospel. Amen. So, Lord, we look to you for their future. Amen. Look to you for even for providing a proper facility for us to gather together to build up one another, to encourage one another, to invite the, our, the unbelieving friends and neighbors to hear the word of God and hear the opportunity to come and know Jesus Christ is our Savior. Amen. Lord, we thank you that we trust in you, that you are building the church. Amen. Lord, if there's anything we have to learn, anything we need to be seen, we pray that we would be open to the Holy Spirit to speak to us, Amen. to unveil to us that we could walk according to your will Amen. and not according to ours. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray this in the precious name of your Son, Amen. and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, is there any questions concerning <laughs> anything um, about what Bruce shared or about what I shared? Or I need to change one of my batteries at the <laughs> same time. So if you have any... <clears throat>